On this season, I got a new woman in my life, Corey. Really? She's called Alexa. Yes. I have I to say, well. I'm liking this. You're the only dog. one that got her. Yes, she's Ex around. It. What's so like wildfire? Wildfire. Uh, yeah, uh, Amazon. You know, Amazon is is very fast and loose with the numbers they throw out there. The fact that this is the biggest holiday ever. If it wasn't, it'd be a disaster because the expectation was for 25 percent year-over-year sales growth, and that includes Amazon Web Services. But uh, they told us they sold nine times more Alexa devices as last year. But we don't know how many they sold last year, so we don't really know what that number means. Uh, and the company is very reticent to release any sort of actual figures on there. Now, Mark Mahaney at RBC Capital Markets uh, estimated about mid-year the company had sold about a billion dollars top line of, of Alexa products for perhaps very, very little profit. But the notion that that could be a much larger number now coming into the end of this year, let's say it's three times that number, that starts to be a significant number, maybe not an Amazon scale where the company is expected to do about $45 billion in revenues for the quarter. But still, selling a lot of these things is good, not just because it works for Amazon, but it creates a flywheel effect where people use the Alexa. One of the things that Mahaney found out with a study they did earlier this year is the more people have Alexa or Amazon Echo devices, the more they use Amazon. Yeah. So if you can put these things and get people to pay for it in their house, they end up being more frequent customers in the same way that Amazon Prime customers become more frequent customers of Amazon. More addicted to the ecosystem. Shannon, great to have you on the show on this festive series. Uh part of the day but give us a sense of the mobile element that you're covering how much there seems to be a real buoyancy and how much we're all getting geeky about the way we shop Oh, well, yeah, and, and I think before uh, the big brick-and-mortar retailers used to talk about their app, and I think people kind of glazed over, but now uh, it's the battle of the apps, really, between these retailers. Um, they know that consumers are only going to be using a couple apps on their phone. Amazon is really dominating that space. Maybe there's a couple other retailers who can make a dent there to have, you know, the app on your phone that you're using in mobile in real time, ordering things while you're lying in bed at night, uh, in the store, price checking from your app. So I think a lot of, more and more the debate is not going to be around who has the best website, but who has the best app and the best mobile platform, because that's really where consumers are moving in the retail space. So are brick and mortar playing catch up? Are they getting the right mobile offering? Are they managing to lock in some of this payment, Shannon? Uh, I mean, I think they're obviously doing better than they were a couple years ago. But I mean, when you listen to Corey talking about Amazon and the sales of Alexa and the way Amazon just continues to dominate the space and is drawing more and more consumers into their ecosystem uh, with Prime, with Alexa and Echo, the harder and harder it gets for brick and mortar retailers. Um, it's sort of like Amazon's always two, three, four steps ahead of them. As soon as they get a great website, Amazon's got a great app. As soon as they get to, you know, two, three, three day shipping, Amazon's doing one hour shipping. Um, you know, they get a good app, now they've got, you know, something like Alexa to compete with. So, um, I mean, they're trying, obviously, but I, and, and they're making some progress, but I don't know if there's any signs they're slowing Amazon down. It's also interesting, if, if you went through the press release today, Amazon released, uh, again, without any actual numbers, but they, told, they went through category by category of their top selling products, and they were wonderfully random and weird. But I actually went through probably about 30 of those items, and what I noticed was these were really cheap items. These were, you know, it was a, it was a power cord for $7.99, and it was a, a, baby, a, a bathtub baby toys for $6.45, or something. The prices were so low that the expectation might be that Amazon has virtually no margin in those things. But by driving so much volume and having just tiny, tiny bits of margin there, they're, dri they're taking money away from other retailers, as Shannon's pointing out. And that makes uh, that changes the nature of retail to push it more towards Amazon. I think that's really fascinating, the way in which we're buying. Who is one out in this? Particularly today, Shannon, consumer confidence best in 15 years. I was really intrigued by not only the breakdown from a generation point of view, consumers seem to be yeah. pretty positive if they're over 35, but millennials, they're not sounding too confident. But also, if you're a clothes seller right now, it's still not a pretty place to be. Right, and to mention to Corey's point, Amazon's now getting into apparel. So we've got one more thing you know, that retailers have to compete with. Um, yeah, this year for apparel, I mean, I don't know if it's gonna be catastrophic, but it's not gonna be awesome. And given where the consumer's at, it could be awesome. But the consumer's just not wanting to spend on apparel. There's not a newness, there's not innovation going on there. There's a lot more excitement happening in other areas like tech right now, where they'd you know, rather be spending their money. Um, and so so the retailers were forced to offer bigger discounts than ever this year. So maybe you were able to get the same number of presents for the same number of people, but you paid less and the retailers got a smaller margin on it. So I don't think we're going to see a, a, a nothing really has changed at least this holiday season compared to last season, I don't think. Maybe we'll see an incremental benefit, but not a huge boost for the, the retailers. Let me also say that 63% of millennial voters voted against Donald Trump. 
So th th that may have actually a big uh, 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 weighting in terms of the optimism that those people feel. That if 63% of a populace voted against somebody and that person wins, they're not feeling good about anything right now. So the, the time period in which they were polled was during this Trump uh, a transition team coming together. And I think that that may have had an effect on the consumer confidence for millennials, maybe not affecting the way they're actually spending money.